My name is Rachel Baker. I have two cars, a 981 Cayman S and a 2008 BMW 135. And then I have two motorcycles. Technically, my scooter is a motorcycle. It's a Vespa LXV 150 and I have a Ducati 959 Panigale. Corsa. <laughs> So I, I really do love my job. You know, when you're in high school, they, you have to figure out what you want to do so that you have somewhere to go after high school. And I really was enjoying music. I played the flute, the oboe, and I just pick up whatever other instrument I, I felt like at the time. I ended up having to play the piccolo in a marching band and it didn't work. And it's just really frustrating when your instrument doesn't work. But we ended up taking it to the local repair store and they ended up letting me apprentice there in high school. And it's just so much fun. It's like a puzzle every time trying to figure out what's wrong. I went to school for band instrument repair, and that's what I have my associate's degree in, so I can fix, you know, flutes, clarinets, saxophones, trumpets, like all the band instruments. Um, but being a flute player, when I came back to New Hampshire, the three best flute makers in the country are all located in Massachusetts. And so I ended up getting a job there a couple years after returning, and that's where I have been ever since. I was one of two girls in my family, and I was the youngest. And so my dad would basically take me everywhere and have me do everything with him. So he was always rebuilding cars and uh, doing fishing things and archery things. So I did all the things with my dad. And so my dad had a 1970 Camaro, which he was rebuilding. So I helped him like rebuild a transmission. He would do body work. And my dad has always had a garage with lots of tools. So that was my first dive into cars. So as soon as I got out of college, I was 19, and I came back to New Hampshire, and I took a New Hampshire motorcycle safety class. I didn't get my first motorcycle until 2009, when I got a 2006 Suzuki GSX-R600, which I loved, and I still love it to this day. It was a great bike. I put 16,000 miles on it my first year with it. The Suzuki is obviously very Japanese, and it makes really high-pitched noises like all the revs. Um, but then the Ducati has this twin cylinder that just makes it more guttural and it's just a lower sound. So it was just a lot more appealing and it just sounds angry, which is, you know, what you want on a bike. <laughs> and it's just such a gorgeous bike. Like everything about it is just gorgeous. It sounds gorgeous, it looks gorgeous, and it's a lot of fun to ride. It was really nice to get it out on a track and just drive it around and see what it felt like and see how well it turns and it just handles everything so well. So, and Palmer was a lot of fun too, not just the scenery, but like, uh, you know, just doing the corners. It was really nice just to go through these nice long corners, which you never get to do on the street. In 2008, I ordered my 135 and then I immediately went on the One Series forums, you know, just to see what everybody else was doing, get to know some local One Series owner, because it was a brand new car that was like its launch year, so everybody was really excited about it. And there was a guy who was running the BMW Autocross, and he invited us, like a bunch of us, out to go to an Autocross. So I think maybe like 10 of us showed up in our One Series and our brand new cars to try this Autocross. The Autocross was just so much fun that I was just immediately hooked. I didn't really seriously start doing more events until 2010 and 11, where I would start to do like, you know, one or two a month at that rate. And then in 2013, uh, a local guy offered to let me drive his car. I got to drive an actual competitive car, and then I realized that, you know, I was actually pretty decent at this. There's a SCCA Nationals, which is everybody from across the country comes to this one location in Lincoln, Nebraska, where they all compete against each other. And um, another guy let me drive his 1M, at a class there and uh, so I came in second my first year there. It was such a great experience and then you know I've been really fortunate that everybody has been letting me drive their cars for the years after and then after that point my BMW wasn't competitive so I was trying to find something else and that's when I ended up looking for my first Porsche Cayman which was a 9871. So my 981 I was gonna have this brand new year, a brand new car, and I was ready to campaign nationally at all the autocrosses. And so I really wanted my car just to, you know, admit my personality because it's a silver car. And so I just ended up with like this nice fairy dust motif on the side of my Cayman. At work, um, I show up in a dress once and everybody's like, oh my gosh, she wears a dress because I'm always in jeans and a t-shirt. And then if I wear jeans and a t-shirt to autocross, nobody knows who I am. It's really backwards. But uh, I actually prefer the dresses. It's just so easy. You don't feel restricted in a dress. It's very comfy and flowy. And, and the hats are great because I am very pale and I will admit that and I wear lots of sunscreen and everybody else should. And I just really like hats and everybody should wear more hats as well.
We started this group called Driving Forward Together to get more women into autocross. It doesn't have to be a guy thing or a girl thing, it's just a person thing. Anybody can drive a car. That's one of my big goals right now is just to get more women involved in the sport so they can enjoy it as well. We started like a contingency for women who run autocross to run in the open classes. So just to, you know, help them out with maybe some fees, we give them t-shirts so that we can like meet each other and we um, hook people up with mentors. So if they need help with cars or a driving thing, that they'll be able to find each other. And I just want, you know, everyone to know that everybody is welcome, especially women. People are really nice at autocross. I've gotten to drive a lot of great cars. I, last year I drove one of the brand new NSXs. Um, I've driven, you know, 997 GT3 RS, the Carreras. One of the cars that really appeals to me after driving the NSX was the 918 because it's the combination of the hybrid and the gas. And so, you know, just the NSX was really amazing driving it because it just like took off and you're just astounded. So, you know, if you figure Porsche did something but better, it's gotta be a lot better. <laughs> I usually like cars that are the epitome of the engineering and the fastness. Yeah, it's just fun. Hey Rachel. Hey Ben. Thanks for coming down today. Thank you so much for inviting us here. Yeah, I, uh, I'm excited to talk about this 918, but we won't be driving it. I guess we'll get to it in a second. But what did you drive here today? I drove down in my BMW 135. That's great. I led into that purposely because I have a 135 <laughs> and I love it. I've actually driven my car across the country six times. I was reading up on what you've done and I realized I had met you maybe four or five years ago at Devon's Airport. Uh, I did my first autocross. Uh, funnily enough, on run flat tires, <laughs> and the experience was um, interesting. I learned a lot, but I remember you at a 135. Um, you must really enjoy that car. Oh, I love my 135. I've got 204,000 miles on it now. I autocrossed it for the first six years of its life, and I'm sure you're not on run flat tires anymore. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I love the car for the way it feels and how you know small and tossable it is. Yes. And I understand you have another small tossable car, I guess. Yeah, so my now dedicated autocross car is a 981 Cayman S. But as I continued to read, I realized that you were a two-time national SCCA champion. Can you kind of tell me about that? Yeah, so I actually have two national jackets and ladies classes. Um, and then I realized that I didn't have to drive in the ladies class. So um, after that, I've been racing in the open class for the past you know, four years, um, which is racing against everybody. And um, I've actually won quite a number of events against everybody in the open class. And, and it's made me such a better driver, just pushing myself further. And I feel like that's what Porsche does with their cars. You know, they're not just content to be, you know, just a great car. They are always pushing themselves forward with every new car that they make. Definitely, absolutely. Can you tell me about the work you're doing with Driving Forward Together? Yeah, so Driving Forward Together was started by me and another autocrosser, Heidi, and it's to encourage women into motorsports, but particularly autocross, because we find that there is just not as many people, you know, but we just really want to encourage everyone. So we're trying to hook people up with mentors or just, you know, give them support. And um, so that's why we also run in the open class, just to show that, you know, women don't need special treatment. We can run just with everybody else and be just a driver. Yeah, of course. That sounds great. Cool. <laughs> I know you don't like comparing uh, your two babies, but would you say the Cayman and the 135 are similar at all? Yeah, um, well the Cayman's a little bit lower in gravity. It's really, you know, you're being enveloped in the Cayman, but really once you start driving, that's when you notice a complete difference in the suspension, the handling, just the ambiance in the, the, in the Cayman. Platform. I love the mid-engine platform, just like this 918. Like this. <laughs> um, 2015 918, which is part of the Audrain collections. Um, we're glad to be talking about this today. It's amazing that they can take that basic Cayman infrastructure and stick a, a V8 right behind your seat and add electric batteries as well, <laughs> which you add up the weight. We're talking about 37 or 3,800 pounds, but somehow Porsche took this around the Nürburgring in under seven minutes. 
What do you think about, you know, Porsche going in this new direction of, of hypercar technology when other brands still are, you know, using complete combustion engines? Well, you always leave it up to the German engineers to figure out like a better way to do something. So, you know, they did the under seven minutes and this is still a road going car. And it's just that Porsche will find a way to do their own thing. Even if something exists, they'll just take it and just build it up from the bottom so that it is a Porsche and you get the feel of a Porsche and it still performs at the top level. Yep, and I, I think that's what's great about this car and all the other hybrid cars that Porsche's put together since is that it feels like a Porsche. You get the steering wheel vibrations, you understand what the car is doing, where it is on the road, um, and it's almost like they understand how the Cayman feels and they want it to feel you know, the same in a car like this. Yeah, I think driver feel is very important to the Porsche engineers. That's why you're buying a Porsche. The difference is, you know, how well they engineer them. Yeah, they always make a better car. It always <laughs> feels natural, you know, in your hands, and they always, right, make a better car. But we always come back to the price for some reason. There's always a premium, you know, for the <laughs> Porsche brand, but I would say it's not for nothing. And, you know, you talk about um, another exciting car we'll be talking about very shortly, which I'm anxious for, uh, the new Taycan. There's a price behind it. I think uh, I think it'll be exciting to see you know how that car feels if it you know if the electricity kind of numbs it down or not. Yeah, and if it feels like we're driving a 5,000 pound car or if it feels like a nimble Porsche, that'll be really interesting to find out. Would you, would you want to autocross a 5,000 pound <laughs> electric all-wheel drive car? Hmm. Uh, I did autocross the 4,000 pound NSX last year and it is surprisingly nimble with the, it's a hybrid as well kind of like you know the 918 and it was amazing like I was surprised at how good it did transition through the course and yeah. you know you just get the instant electric torque and it's an amazing feel so I mean it could be that the Taycan is going to be you know just as nimble and exciting. I hope so. <laughs> Why don't we go check it out? Alright sounds great. Sure. <laughs> I need to be at my reception by 10. <laughs> <laughs> Rachel, have you been in an electric car before? There aren't that many, right? Well, they did have a Tesla at Autocross, like a Tesla Model 3. Uh -huh. So I've been in that one, but no. Very few fully electric cars, because there are very few around. You get a lot of internet judgment nowadays when you see a, like the Taycan. Yeah, they, people see the car and they see the price and they say, how could it cost so much money? But right. you're paying for all the engineering that makes you, the driver, feel like a superstar. And if you don't drive one, it's so hard to you know, <laughs> kind of understand and, and you know, justify the price, and especially with something of this caliber. Yeah. In, a, in a situation where we've never seen an, a vehicle like this. I mean, electricity's been around for forever. David and I, even this weekend, saw a 1931 Detroit electric car. Mm -hmm. uh, electricity's been around. The thing is, it's never been, you know, reinvented in a way like, like Porsche's done it. And I think it's that good. Obviously we just drove the Taycan uh, around Newport and I was in the back seat so <laughs> it was an interesting experience I guess I'll say but, but how did you enjoy it from the, uh, from the front? From the front seat it felt really solid. Yeah. Um, you know I know if you're in the back seat things can get a little bit crazy especially in a 5,000 pound car you probably feel like you're moving around a bit more but in the front seat you're nice and wrapped in and so the acceleration is really more planted from yep. the front. Yep. It definitely feels like a really solid car even closing the door. I opened the door <laughs> once or twice just to, just to open and close it. but. All the sounds it makes uh, when you're in Sport Plus mode, um, and just how the suspension feels. You know, you know it's a Porsche, and you know everybody continues to say this, but does it does it feel like your Cayman at all? Uh, no, it doesn't feel at all like my Cayman. No, no. Um, I mean, even the interior, like the steering wheel, is the only thing that reminds me of my Cayman. 
if you're actually on the outside of this car, you can hear the whooshing noises it makes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's really neat. It has its own personality. It does, um, it does obviously feel like a Porsche. Like, you get that, like, yeah. oh, I'm in a car that works really well. It's engineered amazing. So, it's got, like, that if you want to make that similar to the Cayman. It had this weird shifting thing. If you really got on it, it would shift yep. into a second gear. Yep. So, it's kind of like that way PDK sort of works, where it's a really solid, quick shift yeah. and you don't even notice. Yeah, it does have that unique two-speed transmission. Well, electric cars have been around for generations. Yeah, forever. <laughs> uh, now that we're starting to catch up to speed with the technology, but Porsche's re really reinvented this whole thing. Overall, I think we had fun. Uh, oh, we definitely had fun. Well, I don't know. From the <laughs> well, on the back seat, you might not have had as much seat, fun. You know, from zero to, let's say, 25 miles an hour, uh, it's, a, it's a bit brutal. Yeah. But, but it's definitely a sports car. And I think what's interesting is it does weigh 5,100 pounds. Yes. But the whole car manages its weight really well. Um, yeah, it definitely keeps the center of gravity low. So, it, like, it doesn't really feel like you're in an SUV. Because right. you would think 5,000 pounds, you'd feel it right. go like this. We did some nice roads along the beach yeah. that were twisty, and I didn't yeah. feel like I was ever, like, being thrown around. I think... You watch videos on the internet, you read reviews, and people almost suggest that the car doesn't know its own identity. It's a four-seat GT car <laughs> with ultimate, you know, in performance. This turbo model has 660-ish horsepower, but I think it fits its bill pretty well. I mean, it's it's a new thing. It's its whole new It is its own category. But you wouldn't get silver. <sighs> silver. I mean, I could add more glitter and sparkles, <laughs> but... Yeah, this was a great time. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. <laughs> I'm sorry, let me do that again. I messed it up. Uh, <laughs>